once in a while, a situation arises where you're called upon, or you call upon, someone to help you out. And another service company. In this particular situation, I received a, a page last night uh, from a service company in the LA area. And I guess both of the uh, service guys in that business were out of town, Chicago and Iowa or someplace like that. And of course, when you're out of town, that's when little issues happen. About nine o'clock last night, I got a page, returned it. Again, these two fellows are out of town. Uh, they have an account where one of the two water pumps has stopped working. I'm guessing that they have uh, coached those people as to how to manipulate which pumps stay on or how to best keep that system going until I can get there this morning. <clears throat> I'm en route uh, to Hollywood to a recording studio. Ironically, like children, some aquariums <laughs> never seem to leave home. <clears throat> I uh, was called upon years ago, I'd probably say eight years ago, uh, to build an aquarium in Hollywood. And since Hollywood's a little bit of a distance away, I kind of said, couldn't you find somebody in Hollywood? And the response of the person who called was, they don't know what they're doing. Well, I heard two things out of that. One, this potential customer had uh, already decided that the local tropical fish store was not capable of taking care of them or doing for them what they were interested in. And two, they had already decided that I was going to be the person to make the sale. So I moved forward. What I mean about not leaving home is uh, I set up this aquarium knowing it was going to be in Hollywood uh, with the understanding uh, that another friend of mine would take over uh, the service on the tank. And he did. And he did a very good job. I believe he did that tank for two, maybe three years. Weekly service. It was a good deal for him. Um, then he moved away. Uh, gave the account to a friend of his, who really shouldn't be in the aquarium service business, and that fellow proceeded, I believe, within six or nine months of ruining a coral reef tank. And so that recording studio either, I think, called upon me one day and I referred them to another service company who is currently maintaining that tank. But again, they're out of town, so somehow my name keeps coming up. Is it convenient or is it because I'm good and reliable? So we'll find out here in just a little bit. Upon arriving, we've confirmed that the problem is, in fact, the water pump. But there's a second issue. That is, the union ball valve on the inlet side isn't closing. This is the whole point of the union fittings. Is the quick and easy removal of the pump. With a little bit of jiggling, it appears as though there's some debris that's caught up in that union ball valve. So we've been able to remove the pump, and with the use of a number of towels, we'll catch the small amount of water that does slip out of the filter. In the meantime, we need to switch out the pump, which involves changing out both the inlet and outlet fittings. So we've got the original inlets and outlets threaded onto the new water pump and we're ready to put it back in place. You can see here the dripping that's coming from that valve that won't close completely, but that's not going to slow us down because we'll continue to move forward. And with the new pump in place, we'll open up that union ball valve and plug in the water pump and see how the system works. 
and it appears as though it works quite well. But let's double check, make sure that all our fittings are holding water. Because this reef tank has big bright lights on top of it, it requires the use of a refrigeration unit or chiller. That's located in the room behind the aquarium. This unit has a custom made cabinet that helps exhaust the chiller's heat. And we need to figure out how to plug it back in. That alarm is telling us that the water temperature parameters are outside the settings that the temperature controller has predetermined. We need to figure out what those temperature parameters are and get the chiller running and how to turn that damn alarm off. A quick check of all the plumbing items says it's working well, but I'm still concerned about that chiller, so I'm going to give the service fellow a telephone call. Nick. Hi, how are you? Good, good. I plugged in the chiller, but you've got one of those Medusa units on there, and it's making buzzing noises. Aha, so is there... Oh, so there is a thermostat on there. Oh, okay, 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 I didn't say... So I'll just plug the chiller straight in and bypass the Medusa. Okay, okay. Will do. Will do. You bet. Certainly. Certainly. Take care. Why not? So we're going to leave the uh, Medusa controller out of the loop and just plug the chiller straight in. I guess there's an issue with that other controller, so that's a good thing. So we'll completely bypass the controller and plug the chiller directly into the power source. And there we go, the chiller's now up and running and should be bringing the temperature back down to where it normally is in just a little bit of time. So now both the water pump and the refrigeration unit are back up and running. All right, so that's all fixed. I think we uh, have another happy, not only service customer, but a happy service company. They were able to respond to their customer through me. So everybody's happy.